YouTube. This is Joy with Wheel of Resistance. And uh, we talked about doing a uh, canning video for chicken. That's what we're going to start out with today. And we have here a 23-quart pre pressure canner and cooker made by Presto. Uh, this is something, maybe not this brand or this size, but a pressure cooker is required when you're doing meat. Uh, there's no other way around it. You're just going to have to have a pressure canner. It's just for safety. And uh, I'm going to move this box out of the way. I have my wife with me. She's the canning master. And uh, she's going to kind of go over some of the other things that we have laid out here and what we're going to be doing. Uh, I took the liberty of cutting up some chicken already just to get it done out of the way so you don't have to watch us doing that. And uh, we have water already in the canner boiling. There's a level that she'll explain to you why you need that level of water in there. But it takes a long time to get that water going. So we went on ahead and got that started ahead of time. So we'll go ahead and put Kim on here, and she'll take it from there for the time being. And I'll you watch me cut up some chicken and listen to her talk. Hi, and welcome. So we are going to do the cannon on the chicken tonight. And again, you do need a pressure cannon. I always rely on my old faithful here, the ball blue book of cannon and preserving. It gives you every tip that you need to can everything safely and how to do it properly. So first, what we've done, um, I put the pressure canner on the stove with two inches of water. That's what it calls for, so you have to get that to boil. I start mine off on high. Then you prepare your jars. Make sure they're clean and dry and warm. So this recipe calls for a half of a teaspoon of salt in each jar. So I use the Morton Cannon and Pickling Salt, your choice. You use what you like and what's best for you, but it does need to be cannon salt. So I do know we're going to have at least four. So I'm going to go ahead and put my half a teaspoon of salt in each jar to get started here. While she's doing that, folks, let you know that when you're cutting up this chicken, it kind of needs to be in one inch chunks basically you know and the say something I don't know if you can see this or not but about about that size you know you gotta be precise but somewhere in that area okay and while he's finishing cutting that up we're gonna fill our jars so what I do is my hands are clean so I take my chicken and put it on top of my salt also while I'm doing this I have water preparing to boil behind me and I put, we cut the fat off of our chicken before we put it in our jars. So what we've done is we've cut the fat off, have it in a pot of water boiling to give it that chicken flavor as well. So I'm packing this in the jars and the salt is in the bottom. Once I get it packed in, that's when I add the hot broth on top of my chicken. I also, when we get to that part, I'll show you how I do that. I do use this, this is wonderful. Uh, for canning. It helps you get it in there without spilling it everywhere and making a big mess. Now it does say that this needs to be one half inch from the rim at the top in order for this to process properly. So while I'm still packing this, the water is boiling in the pots with my chicken flavor. I'm just going to continue to pack this in the jars I have prepped already. Looks like we're going to have more than the five that we thought we were going to have. But we already have some more clean that we can use. So I'm going to ask my husband to go ahead and get me at least one more jar. And we're going to put salt in the bottom of that jar to start it off. So that, and you do not, in pressure canning, you do not have to use hot water on your bands. And we're using the mason jars, and I love the wide mouth jars. It gives you an option to get more in easier without making a mess everywhere. So uh, that's my preference on canning meat uh, or soups that contain meat, like a, a chicken soup. 
one half teaspoon of salt mm -hmm. in the bottom of that broth. Mm -hmm. Chicken on my hands. This one? One half teaspoon. Yeah, I'm stuck on the cardboard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay, so you have one half teaspoon. Mm -hmm. yeah, drop it in for me. Okay, so now with that thing, what we're going to do is I'm going to finish topping this jar off with the chicken that we have. So we have six pints here. You can use quarts as well. I prefer the pints when it's, it's just for me and uh, Mr. Prepper here. So what I've done, you saw me take some off of the top of the other ones to finish this one off, okay? So it does tell me you have to have one half inch headspace here. Now what, what is headspace? What is it is the distance between the, the good and the jar. And then so the, the top of the lid. Yes. Now our water has boiled. And uh, we had put the extra chicken parts in the water to boil it to give it flavor. So let me wash my hands. And let it She's doing that. I'm gonna bring up something I had actually uh, heard that uh, we've got a, uh, a another state uh, that has decided to allow its citizens uh, to have constitutional care. and uh, well that right there that gives us uh, 25 states that's now allowed to carry a sidearm uh, without no concealed carry permit or anything like that. They can carry it any way they choose to carry it. I'm sure that those businesses in those states that still have the uh, choice of uh, not allowing those into their business, they, you know, that's, that's, that's their call. It's private business. They can do what they want to. But we're halfway. You know, we could get a few more. And going along with this, uh, you know, maybe tide will change. I know it won't in all 50 states, but I mean, I, I'd like to see North Carolina get kind of, uh, constitutional carry. That would make me happy. We wouldn't have to go out and buy, buy concealed carry permits anymore. But now she's back, so what we got? Okay, so I also use this, uh, and everything I use is the ball brand. It's also a utensil set for preserving. So when I said one half, one inch headspace, this is only marked one inch. So here at the very top would be one inch. So after I get my water in, I'm going to measure that water to make sure that it doesn't come above one inch headspace. And we're going to add the water now. Now, with the water that she's putting in there, I trimmed off some uh, fat, some not too pretty looking pieces of meat, and uh, we made a broth out of that. Now, once we get that, that broth out of there and use it, we'll take those trimmings. And uh, that's basically, you know, you can make a dog food out of that. That's what we'll do with it. Uh, I mean, you could actually eat it if you want to yourself. It's not going to hurt you. It's just skin and, and fat and stuff. And just some of the things that we don't like. But they can be used. You know, give your dog a treat. I'm sure he'll like it. I know ours does anyway. Okay. So oh, you know, no, no, no. So what I've done is I filled this one a little full for purpose. This is more than a half inch head space. So, oh, yeah. Okay, so I filled this one a little bit more than I should have on purpose. So you can see that, that there's no head space there as well. So when you do that, even if it's by accident, you can just pour that off back into your pot, okay? So we're going to make sure that we have the one inch headspace between the good. So I will have the inch headspace. And also the other end of this is used for removing the air bubbles. So in pressure cannon, you do have to make sure that you have removed all those air bubbles. You don't want anything to spoil because you have air bubbles in your jar. So just make sure that your broth gets down in there properly. 
and we'll continue to fill our jars. And while she's doing that, uh, another thing, what what this what we're actually doing, what this is called, is a raw pack. Is that raw right? pack. Raw, yes. This is raw pack. This chicken has not been cooked. It's, it's a raw chicken, and you, you do that, and I, I know, I'm pretty sure there's another way that you can do it. I mean, you can cook it or whatever. You uh, can. Okay. You can use uh, bone-in chicken as well, but we happen to be using chicken breast. Yeah. The skinless chicken breast, but that's our preference. So well, that's what we prefer to use, and we use our chicken for chicken soup, uh, pastas. You can use it for chicken salad, chicken and dumplings, whatever you want to use it for after you have canned this, and pretty it stores anything, for five years on the ship. Any recipe that calls for chicken, we can use this. Mm -hmm. Like I say, this is this is raw chicken that we're doing, and the canning process will cook this chicken in the, in the jars. Now, you can also do the hot pack if you prefer to hot pack it, but you do cook your chicken down. Now, what is a hot pack? A hot pack is where you cook the chicken before you put it in the jar. Okay. Okay, so you would cook your chicken down. There's no time limit on that until it turns white. Once it's turned white in the pot, that's when you remove it, place it in your jars, your hot jars, your yes. clean jars. Is, is that a boil process? It is a boil process. Okay. So mm -hmm. You just boil it till it turns white, yes. like you would if you was going to eat it yes. right then. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you put it in your jars hot. That's why it's called a hot. So, but we prefer the cold pack simply because it doesn't take as much time, for one thing. Uh, prep time is a lot less time. So, prep time on this chicken was maybe eight minutes. Yeah, it didn't take long mm -hmm. when I cut this chicken up. It, it was, after it was all trimmed, it was probably maybe right around six pounds of chicken, give or take. Mm -hmm. Uh, we started out, I think, on the package, I believe it said 6.18 pounds of chicken. By the time I got everything trimmed off, you know, you're probably looking at about six, maybe a little under. Uh, okay, so what I've done now is I went back and I removed all the air bubbles again from the jar because I added more broth to make sure I had enough in there. So I'm doing my one inch head space, measuring on my jars. Now okay. is is one inch is that is that a do or die measurement? If, if you have I, to be pretty close because if you're not, then your broth is going to boil over and your jars will not seal properly. Because this is actually going to cook them in the jars right. while we have it in the camera. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to clean the rims of our jars because I did handle the chicken. I did add hot water to the jars. Okay, so I've got to make sure that my rims are completely cleaned. There's nothing on my rims. Okay, and then we're going to add our lids. I'm going to make sure that we get them all properly. And you just want to add them until they're finger tight. So we're going to add the lids and the rims. Just finger tight. And then now, why, why do you go just finger tight? How come you don't really just lock it down? You don't want this to explode. So you, you kind of want it to bend if it needs mm -hmm. to. If it it's... needs to bend, we want it to be able to bend. Now, so we don't don't press your lids down at all. Make sure they still have the hump in them, because when they seal, you're going to see them come indented, and you're going to hear them pain. Okay. So also, we preheated this water, and when we put our cannon lid together here. So it tells you how to put it on. It has the arrows to line up, which we're going to show you. And also make sure that your gauge is pointing toward the front so that you can see this. And this is your vent that's going to pop up during that time. Now, once I get these jars in the counter, it does need to have a lid placed on tightly, locked into place. I'll watch for it to vent here for 10 minutes when it starts to vent, while it starts to steam. From 10 minutes after that, then I place the weight onto this. Okay. Now, on your directions that come with your canner, it explains a lot of that stuff. It so, explains it step by yeah, step. Mm -hmm. so. so once you place the weight on and it's been dented out, 
you watch for this to pop up. You're going to see water come out the spout here, but when this pops up, that's when your gauge starts to clump your pressure. You want to cook this pint, half pint, sorry, pint chicken for one hour and 25 minutes in a pressure counter. And it tells you that in the bottom blue. Okay. And you cook it at 10 pounds of pressure. So basically, when you put the chicken in, we take, we get, put the lid on and, and lock it in place. And that, the heat that's inside there, it builds up pressure. Mm -hmm. Now as that pressure builds up, I'm gonna put this a little closer to the camera so you can see what we got going on there. There's a little vent that I'm pushing on. Pressure inside the pot pushes that thing up. And when that happens, this needle on this gauge will start to climb. I mean, it's kind of slow, but you don't want to take off and leave it and everything. And when it hits, in our area, it's 10 pounds. That's kind of pretty much what everything cooks at in a pressure pot. Now, higher elevations, that's going to be different, and it'll be different lower elevations. Check for your area what it is, and when it reaches that pressure, this weighted I don't know what you call that it's a weight, it's a weight, okay? It's a weight. Uh, from what I understand, this thing is uh, graduated at 15 pounds of pressure. When it reaches 15 pounds, it's a safety feature, and that should flow push this up. So it'll vent. Yeah, it, it wobbles on there, and that's normal. And uh, you can vent it yourself by placing. We, I think you use a fork or a knife or something. I use just a butter knife. Yeah. You know, if the pressure gets over ten pounds, and you, it calls for ten pounds of pressure for an hour and twenty-five minutes, I take a knife and just lift up on this weight, and it lets the steam out, which Be releases the pressure. Careful. Be careful. It's very hot. Yeah. And it'll come back down to ten pounds. But also, once I get this pressure built up to the, the 10 pounds of pressure I need, I turn the stove all down. So you would have to adjust your stove to get it to the pressure you need to keep it at. I usually turn it down between 3 and 4, and it holds that 10 pounds of pressure. But I do not ever walk off and leave my camera. So, so we ready to put this on? We are. All right. I'm going to let her have that. She'll put it on. There is a V here, and it tells you to uh, how to open and close. And I also align it with a V on the handle here on my pressure pot. So I'm going to line that up. It does take a little practice. I know I have to fiddle with it sometimes to get it on there. Once you get it lined up. Oh yeah, look at there. <laughs> First time. You, you, tighten, you turn it to the left to tighten it. It tells you how to do that. So now I'm going to wait for this to boil. And then it's going to start steaming from this vent. Once it starts to steam, I'll let it steam 10 minutes, and then I place the weight on the vent. Once I do that, then it starts to build pressure. You'll see water build around the chimney here. And once it starts to build pressure here, the chimney will rise. When you reach 10 pounds, that's when you turn your heat down on your eye. And you keep it at 10 pounds of pressure. For uh, As per the bottle blue that I'm actually looking at now, and this is the one I use, so for the the pint jars, I cook them an hour. Well, that's the hot pack. So we didn't hot pack. We actually raw packed. So we cook them an hour and five minutes for the half for the pints. For the quarts, you cook them a little longer. You actually cook them an hour and 15 minutes if you're using a quart jar. Well, we, I'm not going to sit here and let y'all watch a pop build up pressure because it does take a little time. And then, like I said yesterday, this is going to be a two-part video. But before I uh, close this one out, I'm going to take, and this this book here is what she's using. And let me see if I can get the order of reflection. It's not hitting on it. This is the Ball Blue Book uh, Guide to Preserving. Now, she's been canning for years. Every time she cans, I don't care what it is, even if she's making basic jelly, she's got this thing. She always goes to it. This is basically her Bible of canning. And you can get this at any bookstore. Uh, you can get it off Amazon. You can probably get it off eBay. Any of the online outlets, they have it. It's not It's not that expensive. It's something good to have. Uh, I would highly recommend having it. Uh, the brand of 
pressure canner that you want, you know, they're up, that's up to you. They do run a little expensive. Uh, some of them, I think we got, what, 120 bucks in this one. Uh, but, you know, it's, it, if you're going to can meat, you got to have it. Now, they do have other kinds uh, that, that are set up totally different than this one. Uh, from what I've seen, they have some that have different weights that you would use, and they you adjust the pressure like that. I don't know how people use them. I guess it's whatever you're used to. Uh, I guess that's pretty much it for now. Uh, the chicken is it's in the chicken's in the pot. Uh, it's cooking. Uh, Kim, that uh, toolkit you showed earlier, mm -hmm. where would you get something like that? Can you get uh, that? You can get that from Amazon. You can buy it at Walmart. Uh, this one came from Walmart, and it was like ten dollars. What all is in there? What all um, have Well, there? you get the the cup that I put over the jars to the, pull the, the fluid in. Mm -hmm. You get your measuring stick that can show you the one inch head space. You can use the other end as well for to get the air bubbles out. You also have your grippers, you yeah, those are just kind of necessity with. right These there. Are wonderful. You don't get burnt. You can just pick your jars up out of the camera once it cools off, set them on your towel and pull overnight. And this is also wonderful. So if I'm making jelly, I don't have to make it in a pressure pot. I can make it in a water bath. So making jelly and jams, you heat your jar lids, okay? So I use hot water to heat my jar lids. And I use this to remove the lids from the hot water so to keep from getting burnt. So it really does come in here. So that's basically, that's a magnet. It's yeah. a magnetic okay. lid. With your, yes. And have you some uh, measuring spoons? Uh, you'll need those to measure out the amounts of the can of salt that you need. Uh, I, I think that's kind of it for now. Uh, once this is done, and the, uh, we're getting really close to where we can take these out. We're going to uh, get to that point, and we'll probably have the pressure down and everything because we're looking at about an hour and 45 minutes time total for cook time and then time for it to cool down because uh, you, you want that pressure to get down to zero before you try to open that lid. Uh, if you don't, you're gonna have pressure in there. I don't care if you just got five pounds; it's gonna, it's gonna, it won't blow out on you completely, but it'll be enough to cause you to get burnt. And a steam burn is extremely painful. So, yeah, when, when, when we get to that part, we'll kind of talk about some of the precautions you need to take to make sure everything is what it should be. And uh, when we get to that. The camera will probably be a little jerky because I'm going to get it up there so you can actually see what we're doing. I'm going to reach over and hit this stop button. Uh, Y'all stay low, stay ready, and if you're hearing this, you'll part the resistance.